Welcome everyone to the Storm Infinite Potential Series. My name is Gary Holsenberg and I'll be along the with you all for this journey and what a journey it's going to be. We're talking with some of the legends of our sport and uh, I don't know if there's a bigger one than today's guest. And so we'll play a little guessing game. I'll read off just some of this person's uh, history and bio and you can in your own mind try to figure out who our special guest is but let's uh, let's get to it and cover who this mystery person is. Uh, we're talking 27 national titles. It's a lot. 27 is a massive number. Uh, this includes a U.S. Open and a Queens. That's hint number one uh, that it might be a lady because a Queens championship is a major there on the ladies' side. Five USBC Open championships. Uh, as well this is teams she won team doubles singles all events twice a three-time player of the year seven gold medals for team usa representing the united states of america uh pwba hall of famer a usbc hall of famer and along with this amazing career she was voted the sportsmanship award winner twice two times it's pretty impressive uh, resume, and that's just some of it. Any guesses as we welcome the legend to the show? Her name is Leanne Barrett Holsenberg. Yeah. How you are have you? a little fun with that, Gary. Guessing game. Guessing game. Um, <laughs> I was looking through your bio to get ready for the show, and I don't do it often. Uh, so forgive me, but <clears throat> I was pretty amazed. I only read some of the, you know, career statistics that you racked up, and it is legendary. It is a legendary career. Well, it was a good one. It was good to me, and uh, I have a nice, long career, and uh, I'm very grateful for it. All right. Well, Leanne, we're talking about reaching your infinite potential. No one's done it better than you. Um, that's just one guy's opinion. Uh, today, I, I want to start. The first question is really uh, what advice do you have for anyone watching? Meaning, is there a secret sauce to reaching your full potential? Well, I don't think there's a secret sauce. I mean, there's a couple of things that really go into being successful in anything you do, right? You have the talent to do it. You have the dedication, hard work, and then there's always sacrifices. And um, you don't really think that they're sacrifices at the time, but all those things together kind of would make someone successful in anything they do. I mean, it, it doesn't, nothing comes easy. I mean, you're given a talent or a skill that you're good at and then it's what you make of it. So we all have potential and, you know, a couple of things you have to do to really get your full potential out of it. Right. Um, absolutely. Yeah. You say it fantastically. And by the way, you're really good in interviews. I've noticed in the past when you've done interviews and you've been invited to do various interviews, um, it's something you're really good at. And we're going to talk later that it doesn't come. It's not like your um, first favorite thing to do uh but it's something you've learned over the years so we will talk about that in just a minute um but the secret sauce thing look it's easy to win once maybe well it's not easy to win once let's face it but you won listen to this you won in the 80s <clears throat> the 90s the 2000s 2010s i don't think you bowled much in the 2020s to make it five decades but that's four decades of winning against the absolute best players in the world. And what do you attribute uh, the length of your success to? Um, I never really thought of that until you just mentioned that it's been that long, which A, makes me feel old, obviously. But um, like I said before, I was very fortunate. I mean, bowling was something, uh, is something I really enjoy doing. So it even though it was my job, it, it was how I paid my bills, how I lived, how I bought a house and a car and, you know, all the things that go into life. 
and save money. Um, it was something I really enjoyed doing. And I was fortunate to not really have any injuries during my full-time career. You know, as you get older, your body, you know, is not as strong as it used to be as, as, as even as much as you take care of it. Um, I was always um, very athletic and tried to take care of, you know, my legs and everything that went into bowling. So I didn't really have any injuries. So I think that helped. I really enjoyed what I was doing. I was lucky because I had a lot of success early in my career and which was probably just dumb luck talent. You know, you come out on tour and you win three titles your first year. Like that's not something you ever planned for, right? So it was just things started well. It was a lot of fun. There were ups and downs, of course, but um, you know, just the longevity is I think success will keep you going. It, it, it fuels your fire and your, your heart is still there and um, you want to, you know, you can do it because you've been doing it. So you have, and then you set more goals as you go along. So, um, you know what you can do and you make the most of it. And, and I was lucky because, you know, at the end of the, before the PWBA ended for us, our era, I was still winning, you know, and that was kind of a bummer because I didn't plan on the tour ending. So, um, but I, you know, I still love bowling. So it's just, you know, it's, it's what we do. It's what we love. Yeah, it is what you love and you've dedicated your life to it. And uh, there's sacrifices made along the way, right? Because anyone that really succeeds at what it is that they're working on or their craft and, uh, you know, you can look at it. You don't have to be a professional athlete to find the levels of success that uh you want i mean if you are working at the front desk in a hotel or the front desk in a bowling center and you are that first person that a customer interacts with uh, you want to be the best in the world at what you're doing to give the best experience right so it doesn't you don't have to be uh leanne barrett holsenberg or tom brady to to excel or strive to be great at your craft i i don't think right no, um, there's always sacrifices, even though when you're doing them, it may not seem like a sacrifice until later. Like now in my life, looking back, I think, boy, I really sacrificed a lot. You know, I sacrificed family outings and holidays because of a tour schedule. I missed birthdays for my loved ones. I um, did not get married until after the tour ended and had a family late in life. And it just, you don't really think that, but, you know, while you're doing it, but like anything, you want to do the best you can. So you're, you know, I always felt like your, your name is on it. Right. And even now my professional career as a bowler carries over into my work career at storm because it has my name on it and i'm you know maybe a little different than some people because i i i'm a perfectionist and that was because of my bowling you know if i wasn't perfect so to speak or if i had a bad day i did not make any money you know and i did not get a paycheck you know and you had to perform to succeed. And I still feel that way in my work career. Like I take very um, great pride in the work I do and um, hopefully it shows, you know, but, um, and I think that goes into anything. Like you said, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a, per a professional athlete. You, you should always wanna do your best. You represent yourself, you represent your family, you represent your company. You are an example for others who may come after you. And um, that's just the way it is, right? And I learned that from the professionals who came before me. I learned a lot from the professional ladies, uh, the era before me, and I respected them and they taught us a lot. So, um, and that's what I try to do in my life now. Yeah, and, and let's give a shout out to a couple of the ladies that you mentioned before. Who who before you taught you what it's really like to be a professional? Oh, there was quite a few of them. Um, Jeannie Nakarado, uh, was, uh, I roomed with her and she taught me a lot of things. Her and Robin Romeo, they 
they taught me simple things that, you know, a 19 year old person wouldn't really think like you send thank you notes to the host center. Uh, when you win a tournament, maybe you send a bouquet of flowers to the host center and thank them for doing for, you know, bringing the tournament to their center. You know, there's things that other people do for you that you should be respectful. Uh, take care of your ball reps, you know, like buy them gifts and or tip them or, you know, whatever. If someone helps you, you should be thankful and respectful. Um, Carol Norman was one of the first professionals I met when I was a young girl in Oklahoma and she taught me some things. And, um, but I think uh, Nikki Giannoulias was another one and Judy Sutar and Lori Nichols, just that era that was before us of champions, they really were true professionals and they taught us all how to be professionals and just, you know, and, and, and most of them are really great friends to me now. So it's something I, I really value from my time on tour. Yeah. What's neat about how this, this legacy continues, right. Is uh, you learned when you were a youngster, like you mentioned uh, briefly at the very beginning, I mean, it was between high school and college. You just went to try the tour and you wound up winning three times in your first year. I mean, to talk about making a statement. That was, that was it. And then your career, not that it was easy or not that it was set, but your career became, um, it was born right then at a very young age. And then these, the mentors to you that taught you these lifelong principles that you now are teaching uh, the youth athletes of today with your work in youth bowling. So you're the, you're the leader of the storm U championships and the evolution program, which is a completely free program to all moms, dads, and kids that love to bowl. Uh, it's something storm we're very proud of. We welcome everyone, whether you are currently a storm bowler or, a or not, you are welcome in the evolution program. These type of things, I mean, we're teaching skills through those programs that hopefully last a lifetime. And these are the same skills that you learned in the 1980s when you were winning in the first decade of your four decades of winning. Yeah, I didn't, um, I, I kind of wish that I had learned a few things earlier in my career. So it was about halfway into my career, I realized that there's really a good feeling and and like when you get to a certain point, you should be able to give back to the sport. And and I realized that I went home back to California in the early 90s and we were doing a youth banquet for the NorCal um, youth where I grew up and we were trying to find a guest professional and my friends they were like, well, you should be the professional. And I was like, no, we should get like Parker Bone or somebody, you know, somebody really exciting. And and they said, you are that, you're the superstar for these kids. And I, I never really thought of myself that way until they mentioned that. And then I volunteered at the banquet and, you know, it was really a great feeling trying to show these kids because I was one of them. Like I grew up in the, in the, all-star program and I was one of them when I was little. I was a seven-time all-star and on the stage and and here I was now being the professional to them and showing them one day it could be them. So that was kind of a great feeling and from there I realized that even though I didn't view myself that way, I had a little status that I could do good things with. So uh, when I lived in Oklahoma, it was the terrible Murrah Federal building bombing and that was a terrible terrorist uh, event and uh, my friend who managed the bowling center at the time penny she her and i thought we should do something because we knew some of these families because they bowled one family in particular bowled the denny family so we put together this uh, charity event called from our hearts and i called all of my friends who were all professional bowlers i called all of the industry people. We put together this big pro-am event. We even got airlines to get give us free flights to bring in these professionals. So it was really cool that we were able to just work hard and make some effort and put this big event together. And we raised $60,000 for these families of their surviving kids. And we gave them the money for their children's health and everything, their medical bills and stuff. So um, that was when I kind of knew that I should do some things and it, you know, was kind of 
easy and it was what a great feeling and i started the youth bowlers tour with my friend mike in california to give the opportunities that i had growing up bowling youth tournaments and just what a great feeling that is to give kids you know nowadays some more options and now here i am at storm with you and our awesome employees at you know and owners bill and barb who let us do the storm youth championships the evolution program and we can further give back to the sport so i'm very lucky that my career has gone the way it has um not perfect obviously we didn't want the tour to end or anything you know but things happen for a reason and uh now working at Storm and being able to give back in in the great way that we do at Storm is a, a great feeling. I never would have thought that as a 19 year old, you know, that I would end up doing, you know, things for youth bowling. So just kind of a full circle type thing because youth bowling was very important to me when I grew up. So. Yeah. And it's great to have you and other amazing Hall of Famers. You've mentioned them before a lot. You talked about your friends uh, like Carolyn Doran Ballard and Wendy McPherson, that these are people that, th these are legends in our sport and they've they've found other ways now. Um, they, you know, you all still compete and we'll wrap up with uh, my question to you about can we make it five decades of winning, but the, you are give back in other ways. And you mentioned Bill and Barbara Chrisman, which is really interesting that it is very easy to brag about Storm to, to me. I mean, I work at Storm, so people believe that, well, you're just saying that because you work there. But if I did not work here, knowing what I know about Storm, which is Bill and Barbara Christman, they are Storm. They built Storm from nothing to a successful company. But along the way, there are so many examples of them doing good for others that have nothing to do with bowling. It has nothing to do with selling product. It has nothing to do with anything other than a humanitarian type of, I don't know, push or being able, like you said, there became a, a point in your career when you learned, man, I, I guess I do have a little celebrity. You, you weren't comfortable with it, but people kept telling you and you were obviously the number one player in the world for a period of time and the people did look up to you and then you 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 found that you could do things good for other people with your platform and i i do exactly liken that to bill and barbara chrisman they built a successful company through very much the same way you built a successful career hard work dedication sacrifice then when they became successful, just like you, uh, you found ways to give back to others. It's pretty special. Yeah, Barb and Bill are really the greatest. They um, Bowling has been good to them, obviously. <clears throat> Bill and Barb worked very hard to build their company um, from a very small thing to a worldwide number one company. And along the way, they have supported bowling. They have given back you know, in every way to the sport of bowling. And I know that because I watched them when I was a bowler, they supported the pro tours, they did charity, they were always around and involved. And now that I work for Storm, I know how much charity they do and supporting every aspect of bowling, every type of tournament from youth to adult to senior to just every genre of tournaments we contribute to and then we support the city of brigham city and all of the fun events where storm is based so we support uh just random non-bowling things and then there's the charities that are near and dear to bill and barb so um they kind of do it all and they are able to and even our friends in the industry who are not storm you know who don't work for storm and are affiliated with other brands everyone recognizes how great bill and barb are and their ability to do that and we are just lucky and i feel especially lucky because i get to do a lot of the charity work um which you know had i been a you know, a golfer or a tennis player who makes millions of dollars, I would have loved to have had my own foundation to do those things like the pro athletes who have substantial amounts of, you know, revenue and stuff. Yeah, but sure. 
bowling is just bowling and we love it. And I'm just lucky we ran into storm and now we can do some charity through them because I always wanted to, from the time that I started doing it, it's, it's just a great thing to be able to volunteer and do extra things, um, for the sport and, and outside the sport too. So thanks to Bill yeah. and Barb for making that happen. <laughs> Yeah, choked is, up. All that charity is choking you up, Gary. Yeah, for sure. Getting over this little cold and uh, the lingering cough, of course. But um, is there any truth to just knowing your own truth, meaning staying true to who you are as a person? We're all so different, right? We're all wound incredibly different. You, you have uniqueness to you, and uh, it's different than what makes me tick, right? And so over the time when you were building this legendary career, do you ever think about just staying true to who you are? And is that good advice to others, like following their own path, so to speak? I think it's great advice. Now, I was um, and I, I was a shy, young, um, maybe somewhat insecure girl who went out on tour and I knew that I had a talent in bowling and I knew that was the, for me, it, it, it sounds kind of sad, but I knew it was the one thing that I did good. Like I, I had an inner confidence that I knew how to bowl and that was the one thing I had control of and that I could do. <clears throat> um, but I wasn't always comfortable with everything that came with that. I wasn't wasn't comfortable with being on TV and have everyone watching me. I did not like that at all. Um, I have a funny story from one of my first uh, television shows was a, a, a lady after the TV show came up to me and said, honey, I knew you were nervous. I could see your skirt shaking. And, uh, and I was always kind of a nervous person bowling on TV. I had shaky hands and stuff, but, um, you get used to it and you you're not the same person you are when you're 19 and you do evolve and change and learn and grow and become more comfortable anything that you might not feel good about you can change and accept and and with good people around you as well like people who accept you for who you are and and know your faults and your strengths and your and you're good and you're bad and all that. And you have good friends and you become comfortable. This is just me, my story. And then you do relax and learn how to, but you're still your own person, right? You, you, it's true to yourself. And that's what I try to share with these kids. They have so much potential to do great things and, but they're all different and they all have to take it on their own path. Right. I yeah, mean, and learn sure. and grow and, 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 take it for what it's worth. And I'm just, uh, I love working with the kids and I hope they value the advice and, and life lessons we can share with them. But um, I think the, the one true thing that I really learned from others was respect, respect for the game and respect for, you know, others, competitors, friends, elders, you know, and I feel like I've always been a very, respectful competitor on the lanes and hopefully that has carried over into my um outside professional life on the lanes. Yeah. so well there's no doubt you're respectful i mean you are uh, i remember that u.s open win in 2011 and watching that the tv show was just a massive amount of talent it was the largest by the way that field it was the largest field i'd ever seen comprised of international talent i think there was about 400 people uh, yep. And what I remember was the outpouring of love and support that everyone had towards you, because I believe there's some stat like you had made seven or eight U.S. Open TV shows. You had led the U.S. Open by 500 pins and lost in the championship one game match. There had been this history and you're, I don't know, America's sweetheart. You're this uh, cute little, always been a great little bowler uh, here and uh, had all this success, but never won the U.S. Open. And then 2011 comes along. It's the biggest event I've ever seen on the ladies' side. It's the most talent that I've ever seen. It's in the biggest venue. It's Dallas Cowboys Stadium. 
you absolutely in 120 times bowling on TV hated every single one of them because you don't like to be the center of attention. Now you're in a you're in a football stadium uh, like they build lanes on the 50 yard line. The Dallas Stars in the middle of this set of lanes. There's like something like 13,000 people just in the arena watching on a jumbotron and it's TV interview. Everything about it would have been completely overwhelming and yet somehow you win and i remember that the competitors that you bowled against getting actually emotional thinking about what kelly kulik said after you won but kelly i mean she's told me multiple times man leanne is like my idol like she's my girl that got me fired up to bowl like that you're her like person or whatever in our sport and that's who you beat when you when you won that championship. But just all the ladies on TV, the families, the support, it was quite amazing. Uh, and, you know, making it the fourth decade of winning was pretty cool, too. Gee, Gary, it kind of sounds like uh, that tournament meant a lot to you, too. Because <laughs> you know every single detail of that <laughs> tournament for us. And But that's something that's one of the greatest stories of my career i think because my path to winning a us open started you know 20 years prior to that and having made so many us open telecasts and it was my favorite tournament it was the longest format it was the largest fields and it was always my favorite tournament and like in 90 1990 to 91 or 92, I was fortunate enough to have led that tournament by the record amount. It was 448 pins I led that tournament. So my best chance to win, and I, I didn't win, I lost. Right. And I not only lost the tournament, um, but my mom and dad were there, my grandparents were there, my brother and his wife and my baby nephew were there, my two best friends were there. And I lost my one game match in front of them to the hometown favorite, Anne Marie Dugan, who it was great for her because she was from Southern California. So stories have a way of, you know, happening. And for her, that was a great story. And for me, it was gut wrenching. And then I went right. on to lose more U.S. Opens from the fifth spot, from the second spot, from the third spot, you know, various ways. You could but lose never, anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I lost them all, you know, but still a good week. But never knowing that so many years later, I would win the largest, you know, venue U.S. Open in such a great way with my family there, you know, like, and I would never have enjoyed it back then, like I did when you and Barrett were there. And it was just, but you'd never know. And that's, that's a story to share because things have a way of, working out you know and sometimes yeah. things are just meant to be and uh, you never know until they do happen and it sometimes it's many years later so that's another good story to share with kids because you know perseverance have right yeah perseverance yep. and staying with For it sure. and having some belief that uh yep having some belief that yep. it can happen um yeah Leanne, we're going to let you get going, but here's my final question uh, for this series. Uh, and it is really, Del Bauer and I have talked about it, and I asked Del off record. Uh, as you know, we love and respect Del Bauer a tremendous amount, right? And uh, he, he might be the greatest. I mean, he was a great player, Hall of Fame career, yeah. all the amazing accolades in his, in his bowling when he was a competitor. Then he transferred, like you've transferred to do all these youth, this youth work and tournament and events work at Storm and help others. He he went to help others in the way of being a, a tour rep. And these tour reps are sometimes unsung heroes and they help the players get victories. And Dell's probably helped hundreds of people win professional titles around the world. He said to me that he absolutely believes not only can you win again on the pwba tour 
but he believes that you can win a PBA 50 because you're over 50 now. He believes you can win a PBA 50 national uh, pro, you know, tournament. And I'm curious. I know you have an injury now uh, that's that you had surgery on your hands. And um, is there going to be a run to make it five decades of winning? Are you going to win in the 2020s? And can you share that? You know, Dell, I, I guess if I ever wanted to try, I would have to take Dell with me, right? So he could, he has a way of uh, motivating me and uh, I would trust his expertise on the lanes and uh, I know he could get me there. But the longer it goes and the older you get, the harder it is. There's so much competition out there nowadays, but um I, I do kind of think if I dedicated myself, we'll go back to the very beginning of this interview. If I dedicated myself, if I worked hard, I'd have to make some more sacrifices. Obviously, I have a job and I have a family and I have a house. And, you know, I mean, I, sure. I would have to sacrifice things to get ready to go compete. And I always think, oh, maybe I could, you know, like when I do bowl or get on the lanes, the little fire comes back in my in my heart and you know it's there not maybe not burning as as brightly as it used to be but um there's that country music song that always makes me laugh when i hear it it says i'm not as good what how does it as go? i I'm once not as was good as i once was but i'm good once as i ever was so yeah. that would have to be my theme song if i did go <laughs> and hit the lanes and you know i'd have to you know get it to resonate with me but yeah. You never know. I mean, I would like to uh, get, I would like to bowl some more. I, I still enjoy it. And I sh certainly get motivation from the kids when I go watch the kids or when I hang out with the kids at our events, yeah. I always come home and want to go bowl a tournament. So hundred uh, percent. It's fun. Thanks to them. So who knows? I'll, you know, I would love to. So you never know. We'll see. All right. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed that we can make it five decades of winning at the highest level ever. Um, Leanne, I want to thank you for everything that you do for the sport. And, and I appreciate you spending time with us to share some of your story with all of us in this infinite potential series that we're doing here at storm. You are a true legend of our, of our game and, and you are still legendary. You beat you're legendary every single day by what you're doing to give back to the next generation of bowlers. And that is something to be super proud of. And uh, you certainly have a fan in me for sure. Well, I, I would like to thank you for including me. Um, there's so many superstars out there and there's so many great stories and there's so much potential, right? So, I mean, yes. it's a cool little series and I'm thankful that you included me and I look forward to hearing everyone else's stories too. So um, stay tuned. We'll have some good stories here. All right, Leanne, thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, everyone. Listen, that was the legendary 27-time uh, champion. I mean, the re the resume that I started the show with is amazing. Four decades of winning against the best in the world. Uh, Leanne Barrett Holsenberg, and uh, thanks for her time uh, coming by on this Infinite Potential series brought to you by the Infinite Physics. And look, look forward to the next one and who our surprise guest will be. Uh, until then, we wish you all the very best and uh, take care of each other.